Hi, my name is Jonathan Hicks. I'm back at the Rice and this evening I'm joined by Matt, Tim, Mark, and we just finished playing Raccoon Tycoon, which is essentially an auction game with a rather bizarre animal theme pasted on top of it. Uh, essentially, when it's your go, you can do a number of actions. So one thing you can do is produce, and you have a hand of cards here, and you pick one of these cards, and when you play it, you get the stuff at the bottom, although up to three. There are some buildings you can buy. These are the kind of buildings here. Uh, the buildings can let you get you more than three, but otherwise you just get three. So I might pick two wood and an iron, and you kind of take it from the supplier, so I grab my two wood and my iron, and then the price of the things at the top increases. So there's like a price tracker for each of these things. So you can see in this case it's coal, iron and the goods. So each of those things, the goods and the coal and the iron, all go up by one. So that's one thing you can do. You can play one of these cards. Then you'll sort of discard it and you draw a new one. Another thing you can do is you can buy a building. You can see there's a pile of buildings at the bottom here. Uh, and the building will help you in various ways. You can store a maximum of 10 goods plus the number of buildings. So you might buy this one to help you store extra goods, for example. This one, when you produce, you know I was saying buildings can make you produce more. Instead of producing just three, that could produce four things. This one gets you money when people sell certain kinds of goods. So you can buy the buildings, just pay the money at the bottom right, and kind of add them to your tableau, and they'll help you in various ways. Another thing you can do is you can buy a town. Ultimately, it's most victory points wins in this game. Um, and you have to pay the resources. In this case, you pay four wheat, or you can pay six of anything, and you'll get the points. You get extra points if it's paired with a railroad, though. Hmm, what's a railroad? Well, that's what the funny animals are for. Uh, each of these kind of represents a certain railroad somehow, uh, and you're basically getting set collection. So you're getting points for the number of, in this case, skunk works. So these are the ones I've been collecting, and oh, look, I've got three skunk works here. So if I were to get a fourth skunk work, I'd get um, 15 points instead of just the nine. So this one's quite important. So I'd kind of say, I'm starting an auction for a Skunk works, and then it would go around, and this is the minimum you've got to bid. So I'd say I'll bid five, let's say, because it's pretty valuable for me. And then we go around, and Matt would say, I don't want it, I pass. So he passes, Tim goes, I'll, I'll pay ten. Oh, and then 12. And we're kind of going round and round, and it goes around as much as you like until everyone passes except for one person, and they pay the amount. So maybe they fleeced me, and I had to pay 60 or something crazy, and I had to pay this, but at least it completes my set. So you're getting points at the end for any sets. You can see I got two of these tycoons, so two of them would give me nine points. You're getting points for the towns, and effectively, as long as you have a card that you can pair with a town, you're getting the extra points. So it's five if you don't have enough railroads, but usually you're going to have enough of these to pair with those for the points there. Um, there's a couple of buildings that can do some funky things, but essentially that, you just keep playing until either the um, cards run out here or the towns run out, and most points wins. What do you think? Um, I would like to play it a few more times. Uh, I got quite hung up on how powerful one of the buildings was, especially as it came out early and Travi bought it and I wanted to buy it. Uh, but it gave you five money every time an auction happened. So every time one of these railroads got auctioned, Travi got five money. Um, when you call an auction action, the person who calls the action, if they don't win, they get to do another one. So Travi was calling lots of auctions, selling everything to everyone and getting five money every time someone bought it. Um, so I'd like to play again and see if, um, if that is as powerful as I think it is. Um, so the, may, maybe, I, maybe I overreacted to um, the card, but there might be some balance issues. But I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the game. Um, and it, the points weren't too far apart, so I guess it wasn't like he ran away completely. He did win the game. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's really cool, and the pieces are amazing. They've got these... Uh, so I'm not sure if this is a Kickstarter exclusive coins, but it's got these metal coins mm, that are just lovely to hold and, and, and play with um, all the time. And a giant wooden raccoon for almost no reason. So it's, it's really nicely produced. There may be balance issues. I'd like to play it again uh, to find out. So yeah, it's, it's good. Okay, Tim? Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. It's one of those that um, you have to play for a bit before it clicks in, and it's actually quite simple. It's actually quite a simple game, but you have to get used to the, the movements of the prices, and you're basically trying to get... You're hoping that other people will increase the prices of the things that you've got to sell. Oh yes, I didn't actually mention that, but uh, one other thing you do, of course, is sell your goods. Let's say I want to sell my wine, <laughs> you've got to put it in the supply. And whatever the price is, you get that. So if I sell three bottles of wine, $8 each, I get 24. But then because I've sold three, the price will go down by three, one, two, three. So as Tim's saying, you want other people to put it up so you can sell it, but then when you sell it, obviously it goes back down again. 
And perhaps in addition to that, we'll say that you've got um, a limit on the amount of resources that you can hold at any one time. So you may be gathering a certain kind of resource hoping the price is high. If somebody else offloads a load of it, then suddenly the price is low again and what you've got is not as valuable as it was. Uh, and there are buildings that help you store more as well. I think, yeah, it's one of those that having played it, you understand why some of the buildings are valuable and then early in the game you will probably make different choices on the second play to, and have more of a strategy uh, for doing it. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a bit odd in the way it fits together somehow and in perhaps a little bit in the artwork as well but I enjoyed <laughs> it overall. Okay, Mark? Yeah, it's a nice mid to lightweight auction game. I quite like I actually quite like the art though, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But as I said the production quality is ridiculously high for for a game this time. Yeah, it's fun. I like the markets were Good. I obviously enjoy the predicting where it's going to be. Am I? Uh, what do I think they're going to be selling? Can I push the price of this up and then it should still come back down to me so I can sell it and make the most out of the money? Uh, I'm not sure if that uh, maybe is a little bit too randomly five because generally speaking, if I push anything up, some one of the other four players is probably going to have sold it. So I think it'd be worth slightly maybe four with better than five. Uh, other than that, yeah, it's what we had a laugh. Maybe went on a little bit long for this sort of style of game. I'm not, I'm not sure there was enough going on, but we did have fun in the auctions, the competition, uh, and yeah, it, it is intense. You are sitting there, times just going, just please don't do that, which is always is always good. But that, it's not amazing. But uh, for this sort of walk, I guess an auction game like this, at uh, this way, it probably suits a lot of people. Rating? I give it six and a half. Tim, out of ten. Um, seven. I Matt C out of 100. <laughs> uh, I, I think I would probably go six and a half as well. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a lot of fun. The theme is completely pasted on, and it's paper thin. It's, the animals have got nothing to do with anything. It's just an auction game, but actually the price thing works really well because, as they say, you're really paying attention to what other people are doing in terms of how they push the price up. And as Mark says, can you risk pushing the price up? Because you can't sell and push the price up in the same turn. If you push it up, will it still be high when it gets back to you? It's always a risk. And that was interesting. I like having to pay attention to what other people were doing. The buying the sets is fairly straightforward. It's simple. With five, it does take too long, I think. <laughs> Three or four players will be the sweet spot. And I think it play really well. We had fun, though. It was, it was just an enjoyable, fairly light market game. I think it's solid. I'd give it a seven out of ten. All right, thanks for watching. That was Raccoon Tycoon.